All right, welcome back, my friends. I'm extremely excited to bring back the RoboTaxi Report. This is a presentation of the data I've been collecting since October 11th, 2021 with version 10.2. It used to be a weekly video before my career change, but going forward, I'm aiming to have a report out bi-weekly. It's not a style that'll appeal to everybody, but being able to present this data is one of my favorite things about the channel. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the FSD beta community tracker set up by my buddy Elias. He regularly posts updates on Twitter and is one of the only people I know of that actually has more distance driven on the City Streets beta than myself at about just 2,000 kilometers more than me. Unfortunately, around 70% of my driving is highway here in Southern California. You can see here that we've got over 122 testers in the US and Canada contributing to this crowdsourced info. If you have the beta and want to contribute, I highly recommend getting in touch with Elias on Twitter. His handle will be in the description below. Okay, so it's been nearly six months since my last report, so we've got a lot to look at today. What you're seeing now is a record of the success rates of FSD on real customer trips through Uber or Lyft. A success as written here means that the trip was completed without me disengaging. Given the state of the system, this is a very strict metric that looks at the current reliability of autonomous transportation as a service. It's not necessarily reasonable to judge the system entirely on this metric given the heightened expectations in dealing with customers. It is, however, a fun way to monitor the system relatively early in development as a robotaxi and watch how it changes from patch to patch. This chart sums up the beta tester experience pretty well in the sense that overall performance is all over the place. You can see why I've called 10.11.2 my poster child for success in some of my videos. It's well reflected here with a clear lead in reliability even compared to the latest patches that are surprising to look at. 69.2 was unable to complete a single trip without fail, and now on 2.3, we're back up to about 42%. The more trips I can measure, the more robust the sample size will be, and upon getting a new build like 10.7 or version 11, I'll condense 10.69's iterations into one bar for comparison's sake. Most of the failures resulting in low reliability are centered around decision-making with the leading cause being improper lane selection. This causes the system to miss a turn or potentially get blocked by traffic going the same direction, and it's not hard to imagine the frustration one would feel if they got into a robotaxi and were taken on a wild goose chase. That's why I refer to this as such a strict metric. I value my customer's time, so I'm not going to allow the system to miss a turn or take us on some random route that'll impede my customer's convenience. That being said, 10.11.2 was really good at committing to a route and had a much smaller issue with prioritizing the route over getting around other cars. Since then, that's not been the case, and it's been a constant annoyance anytime the beta decides it's gonna try to get around somebody rather than just staying in the lane it's in to take the left or right turn coming up. I'm looking forward to how 1069's reliability rounds out with more info leading up to our next big update. Next up, we'll take a look at city versus highway disengagements per build. This is one of two ways I like to represent the system's information using a less is more approach. It's a bit more intuitive for some to follow the idea that the line going down is what we want here. In the next graph, we'll look at the inverse. To better understand this, you would ask, for every kilometer driven, how many disengagements would occur? And yes, as with my vehicle settings, I'm representing my information in the metric system. If you want it in miles, you'll have to apply some conversions, but the point of the graph is the same regardless of the units. This graph describes several things really well for me. It reflects the increase of disengagements on city streets since its greatest performance on 10.11.2, which isn't so great, you don't want it to get worse but also the iterative improvements from 69.2 to 69.2.3, as well as showing something we'd expect, which is how consistently the system's performing on the highway. Since to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't had much work done, as Tesla's focus is on the harder problem right now of city streets. Hopefully soon we'll see performance rivaling 10.11.2 and better. As I said a second ago, now we'll look at the inverse of the graph with the information represented on a more is better format. So this is kilometers per disengagement, or how far does the system travel before a disengagement occurs? Highway performance dominates here clearly as well correlated with the given build. Blue is representing the city streets, while orange is the highway FSD, also known in the community as NOA or navigate on autopilot code. I include both of these representations after being asked by the audience to show it in both ways. So in this sense, the more the merrier. All right, next up, we're gonna take a look at disengagements versus interventions on each build. And one thing that really stands out to me is that on the best two builds that most testers seem to agree on were also the ones in which there were fewer interventions than disengagements. 
10.8.1 and 10.11.2. This also does a great job of showing that 6.9.2 was in fact quite a bit worse than even 10.10.2, which at the time felt like one of the biggest regressions we've had. Fortunately, later iterations leading up to the present are already showing improvements, and I expect that to continue. As we get close to wrapping up the Robotax report, we're gonna look at my causation donut for 10.11.2 and then compare 10.12 and 10.69's iterations afterwards. This quickly became an audience favorite as it does a great job of showing what is actually tripping up the FSD system and how often. As I alluded to in the beginning of the video with the Robotaxi results, basic decision making is the vast majority of disengagements. This again predominantly is caused by improper lane selection when approaching upcoming turns. Following that are issues with maps. Typically, this is because the address on Uber or Lyft doesn't match Tesla's nav or the pin is in the wrong place, which would set the car too far from its targeted location. This is heavily tied to Robotaxi trips and will be a problem that needs to be addressed as we get closer to serious Robotaxi application. After that, human is pretty self-explanatory. Any issue that stems from another driver, cyclist, pedestrian, and everything in between. I've recently enjoyed keeping a human error counter in my videos to really highlight moments where other people can be a big problem. System limitations are annoying in the sense that the vehicle just isn't able to handle them yet due to programming and typically include maneuvers like U-turns or issues with no turn on red, as well as even driving in heavy rain or poor lighting conditions where the system goes into a degraded state. And then finally, of course, road closures for events. Uh, the latter is further stressed by the inability to reroute ahead of time since the system lacks the information about planned road closures. Going into system error, it's far rarer and more mysterious. It's been recently seen in my Roaming Coronado video where we got the red wheel and were forced out of autopilot for whatever reason. There's not really much more I can say on it other than it's a surprise and really annoying when it does happen. Getting into safety or critical disengagements as often referred to are fortunately a much smaller number when compared to the rest. This is also a pretty simple one to understand. Anything that could pose danger or severe damage to people or property. Critical disengagements have been minimal and seem to stay pretty far down the list of causation consistently over time. Construction, again, pretty self-explanatory. Just any issue where construction causes you to disengage. LV is for large vehicle, and this describes situations unique to dealing with larger buses, semi-trucks, waste management like recycling or garbage trucks and such. The system has a difficult time reacting properly to these vehicles by sometimes treating a large vehicle like a parked car when it's not, or getting spooked by how close it may be to a lane line and can get tricky when semi-trucks are trying to navigate smaller city streets, causing drivers to get out of the way or react ahead of time, and unfortunately the beta isn't great at that yet. Finally, legal is a subset of safety and critical disengagements in which the issue is squarely an illegal maneuver if intervention is necessary, with the exception of no turn on red. That is obviously a case of a system limitation, and we know that so we understand we need to take over ahead of time. But it's the surprising ones where, for some reason, the vehicle doesn't feel like it's going to slow down in time for a red light or go when it isn't supposed to, basically treating any situation in a legally incorrect manner. Now, special PSA here. It is very important as beta testers to be ready in these instances and take over before the illegal action takes place. Before the illegal action takes place. So we can then report that back. Some have been seen running red lights and going, oops, that wasn't good. That's basically asking for the naysayers to run to NHTSA and cause more issues than they already are. Let's not feed the FUD. Let's be responsible, be vigilant, take over before it does something illegal, not after. Now that you understand better what these represent, we'll take a look here at 10.12.2 and the several variations of 10.69 we've had. 10.12.2 has far more information given the amount of time spent on that build, similar to previous builds. So it'll take some more time to get 10.69 to the same caliber, but more info will contribute to a more fleshed out donut. It's evident here that basic decision making continues to be the biggest cause for disengagements. Feel free to pause on the screen to get a good look at the different donuts and how they compare. If a cause isn't there, it's because it hasn't been encountered yet on this build for me, but likely will at some point in the near future. I'm so excited that I've finally gotten all of my information together and caught up to bring you all these reports again, as it's another thing that's missing from YouTube coverage of the FSD system, even with over 160,000 testers. I figured for fun, I'd throw down some extra stats for you to go through, and after this, I'll include some footage of my journals where I've been logging everything over the last year now. I entered the program on October 11th in 2021 and took my first drive that morning around 4 a.m., and you can find that video early on the channel. At the time, I had 157,870 kilometers on the car, and from 10.2 to 10.8, we we covered a total of 17,101 kilometers, 4,446 kilometers of that was on the City Streets Beta, 11,876 on the public or NOA code, 
and 779 manually driven. Feel free to pause here and check out my stats on the more recent build, starting with my heightened focus on 1081 and customer involvement up to present day on 1069.2.3. And finally, here are some fun cumulative stats around my total time and distance driving on the beta and the total number of robo-taxi rides I've logged since 10.8.1. Important to understand that not every trip I do with a customer is necessarily logged as a robo-taxi trip. Sometimes I'm talking to a particularly chatty customer and don't engage FSD until later than drive. Naturally, circumstances like that won't be counted for or against, so it doesn't impact the results and cause an issue with the credibility of the data. I really hope you've all enjoyed this video and the return of the RoboTaxi report. I love doing these, even though they have so much work, because it's so great to see some real measurable information to go with all the fun drives. Keep your eyes out for these reports to come by weekly, so in two Mondays from now, take care, everybody, and I will catch you in the next video. Here, as promised, to look at all the journals from the recording I do for the RoboTaxi report. Uh, misdated it. This is 2021, but October 11th, 4.24 a.m. was my first drive and effectively filled this book up with information on drives. And when I was done with that, got into the rest. <laughs> so several books here of information. So that's where it's all coming from. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. I appreciate it.